So how much pressure did you feel to really accurately portray this particular period of this, this great director's life? Uh, you know, of course we wanted to be as authentic as possible. We were lucky in that we had Stephen Rubello's incredibly brilliant book, Alfred Hitchcock and the Making of Psycho, which really detailed almost minute by minute the making of, you know, Hitchcock's masterwork, Psycho. So we wanted to do that, but clearly, you know, in our movie, and we wanted it to be, the movie to be different to the book, because mm -hmm. the movie is really the story of the relationship, which most people don't know about. And of course we researched that endlessly too through the various biographies. Um, but I think there's also an element of fantasy in the film, and I think that, you know, it being a movie, as Hitchcock used to call them, we want to tell the audience, you know, it's as fact-based as we can make it, but it's also working as, you know, a work of fiction in places, because no one knows what Alfred and Alma actually said privately in their bedroom. No one really knows what was in Hitchcock's mind as he was shooting the shower scene. So what we're doing is a sort of fantastical exploration of what that might have been too. So the film is a mixture of things where it could be fact-based like in, in Hitchcock's fight to get the film made and fights with Paramount and the motion pr production picture code we really drew from resource and obviously where there's a fantasy sequence where he's dialoguing with Ed Gein obviously you know that's fantasy so hopefully the audience is along for the ride and understands that it's a film and that we weren't really trying to make a documentary it's not a documentary I've, I've made documentaries it's it's a movie, a narrative film, and, and I'm a storyteller, and my job was to, to tell the story. The, the decision to put Ed Gein in it as sort of this devil on the shoulder, voice yeah. inside his head, I'm wondering if you thought that would be a contra controversial decision, and, and what, what uh, brought that about in the first place? I don't know. I think we wanted to find a way to get inside Hitch's head and to take the genuine darkness that was in him and in this story, because, you know, Psycho is a popular entertainment, but it's based on, you know, the story of Ed Gein from that, that came from the Robert Block novel. Norman Bates was inspired by Ed Gein. Um, so I think that it was important for us to, to have real darkness, even if it's fantastical, in the film because there was real darkness in Hitch and in this, in, and in this movie. I don't think we were, we, we, I mean, Hitchcock is controversial. Whatever you do with Hitchcock, there's gonna be controversy and opinion because people feel, have very strong feelings about him. Some people feel he's a cinematic god and everything he did was brilliant and he can't be, he has to be on a pedestal and, and he must be worshiped. And other people think he, he must be, you know, judged for being an evil, sadistic <laughs> monster. So our, play, our point of view was to make a, a, an entertaining film about him to show that darkness, which we do in the film, but also to show the tenderness and warmth that clearly had to be part of him and was. And you could tell, particularly with his uh, relationship with, with Alma, that when he finally, you know, he never received an Oscar, but in 1979, mm -hmm. the AFI uh, gave him the Lifetime Achievement Award and, and his speech, he said, you know, I share this award as I have my life with Alma. And she was right there. And it was this very unusually revealing moment of the man himself expressing love for his wife, which he never did. And I thought that was just another interesting component to throw in the mix in, the, in this vast and endless discussion about Hitchcock, which will go on because the movies are so bloody good and yes. fascinating. And you're like, you have a sense, the audience does, of a man trying to work through his emotional and psychological issues as he tells these you know, great stories. Can you talk a little bit about the collaboration between you and Anthony Hopkins in terms of uh, how you crafted this portrayal? I think it was important that we had humor, darkness, and, and, and also, uh, you know, warmth and um, unexpectedly intimate moments with a man who, whose persona really betrays nothing. You know, the, the, the man we see on Hitch, Alfred Hitchcock Presents is very droll and ironic and he's very stands back and, you know, and he's known for being sort of cold and biting and cynical. But I think there's always more than meets the eye, you know, and the mythology and the man are often very different. And I think what Tony wanted to do was sort of explore, and again, he's an actor exploring what might have been. We're not saying that his take is definitive right. because we don't know. But for, uh, Tony's instinct was to really showcase all the sides of him and allow the audience to decide what they wanted to, you know, because I think it will still be polarizing. I think some people will think, oh, he's a great guy, and other people will think he's horrible, and, you know, and, and that's good because, Ultimately, if that kind of conversation provokes interest in Hitchcock and that interest brings a new generation of pe people to see the films, I think that one of the most gratifying things is these young people showing up at screenings and suddenly now wanting to go and watch Rear Window and Vertigo and Saboteur and The Man Who Knew Too Much, you know. And um, I think that that's a wonderful byproduct that we weren't anticipating. And, and I would say on the other, another thing that's been happening is that the people who really were there 
people who work with Hitchcock, script supervisors and crew members, have been coming up to us and saying, this portrait, Hopkins' portrait of Hitchcock, finally has caught the mischief and the warmth and the madness of this man that I work with every day. And that, that to me, is the greatest accolade. You know, people are going to say what they want, but the people who are actually there, who knew him, are being incredibly um, positive because they understand that we've sort of caught his spirit.